Hello and welcome to Real Biz. I'm Rebecca Jarvis here in New York City. And here's what's on our radar. Who says you can't start your engineering career at five years old? That is when Dean Kamen, the inventor of the Segway, made his first invention. And now he's on a mission to counter the dangerous decline in America's leadership in technology and innovation. Here's a stat that caught our eye. Just 70,000 undergraduate engineers come from the United States compared to China's 600,000. Dean Kamen's here in studio to talk to us about the epidemic and his solution and a world where science math and engineering are fun for children and young adults. That's what it's all about. Then meet the students and the coach of the first robotics team, the Thunder Colts. These aspiring engineers are gearing up for the ultimate competition where over 75,000 high school hopefuls in 17 countries will compete to build one robot in just six weeks. At stake, a brighter future for all of us and $20 million in scholarship prizes. And whether you want to build the next rocket ship, medical device, or create technology to solve the world's biggest problems, we're going to tell you right here on Real Biz how to get your start. So we want to get right to it. He is known as the Thomas Edison of our time, one of the most successful scientists and inventors in the world. And it's hard to remember what the world was like before his innovations came along. Dean Kamen created the Segway scooter, the insulin pump, and the portable dialysis machine, just to name a few of his big innovations. He has nearly 500 U.S. foreign patents. And Dean is not just inventing things. He's created a platform for young, passionate engineers to follow in his footsteps. And we welcome now. Now, Dean Kamen, so nice to have you with us. It's great to be here. We wanted to have you here for multiple reasons, one of them being you say America's just falling behind. So, as you pointed out, America's producing about 70,000 engineers a year, China alone 600,000. What drives most economies more than ever these days is innovation. America always led the world in innovation, in entrepreneurship, and people taking risks to do great things. It's not a coincidence that, you know, Wilbur and Orville were here and Thomas Edison was here. But if America loses its edge in innovation, we will lose our global edge in everything else. And I think in a free country, in a free culture where you get what you celebrate, we've got to convince kids, particularly women and minorities in this country, that their future, their exciting careers are going to be in technology. And they've got to start young. Again, as you said, kids don't decide at the age of 17 or 18, I wonder if I could hit a baseball. Or th if you don't start with Little League, if you don't have it as part of your culture, it's a little late as you get to be a young adult to decide, I want to be involved in sports. It's the same thing for science and technology. We've got to get the kids young. We've got to make it exciting for them. We've got to get their passion moving. And in a country that's obsessed with sports and entertainment, it was easy. Let's turn science and technology into an entertaining sport. Let's make it aspirational after school. Let's not make it quizzes and tests. Let's make it cheerleaders and school bands and mascots. And let's show all kids that science, technology, engineering is every bit as exciting as bouncing a ball, but it's likely to re lead them to major career opportunities. What was the hook for you? Well, as a kid, I realized that the power of technology is awesome. You know, without tools, you was can't there, do much. Was there a piece of technology that you looked at where that clicked for you? I started my first business in junior high school building electronics for people. Uh, before that, I'm embarrassed to tell you, at the age of about five, I decided I could make an automatic bed maker by tying pulleys to the four corners of the sheets in the bed and stand in one place and tighten the whole thing. Because you didn't want to make your own bed. Right. So you figured, I'll, I'll create some sort of technology to get, get beyond this. Technology solves problems. And if you create technology, it's just, it's an exciting thing to do. The first time kids on first teams realize they have the capacity to use all these engineering tools to create something that never existed before. It's an exhilarating feeling. But sadly, most kids, again, particularly women and minorities, see science and technology in our culture as difficult and, and, and distant and only for those rare few. And somehow, uh, we've got to change that image. We've got to make all kids realize how much fun it is, how exciting it is. And unlike any other sport, every kid on every first team can turn pro. Everyone. Everyone. Right now in this country, there are a couple of million 
empty positions that can't be filled. I have a little engineering company with about 500 people. I have 100 open positions. You are hiring. <clears throat> We're hiring. And imagine, uh, talk to Boeing. They've been with us since day one. I know you have some of their people here. But Boeing, one of the great iconic engineering companies of the world, is involved with FIRST. And I think uh, to, they see it as a great long-term investment. But <clears throat> right now, America keeps talking about job shortages. We don't have job shortages. We have skill shortages. Anybody with technical skills in this country today is in high demand. It's easy, not just to get a job, but to get an exciting career if you have the tools. I, and I hear this a lot, actually, from a number of CEOs in the high-tech spaces. What specifically, if somebody is watching Real Biz right now and they say, I've been on the hunt for a job for ages, haven't landed one, I'm hearing what this guy Dean is saying, and it sounds like I should be going after a job with him or Boeing or one of these companies that's uh, witnessing these skill shortages, which specific skills? Is there a, an educational program? Is there a community college? Is there something specific out there that if I said today, I want one of these jobs, I don't know if I have the exact skill set, I need a short-term gap to get me there, what would it be? A safe baseline is develop some competence with computers and programming, coding. Almost every big company I know, every tech company, and lots of non-tech companies are desperately looking for people, whether it's IT or developing new products with embedded code. Robotics is a baseline. You'll learn electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, systems engineering, controls, software, sensors. But the world's an exciting place for people that understand these powerful tools, and there's career opportunities in almost every field for people that have technical expertise. From the guy who created this segue, what does the future hold? Five years from now, what's going to look totally different? Here's what's exciting. Technology's moving so fast that anybody tells you they know what the future is, is going to be wrong. Because we haven't even figured out what the problems are going to be. We, there will be whole industries that you can't imagine. 20 years ago, nobody knew what Google would be when it became a company, and now look at it. I would tell you, if you really want to see the future, go to a first event and look at the kids that are participating. They are the future. Dean Kamen, thanks so much, and we want you to stick around. We're going to have you back in just a moment, but first, I want to welcome the students and coach who are gearing up to compete in the first robotics 2015 competition, which kicks off this January. First announces the challenge that the robots have to perform, and this team will be one of 3,000 teams from across 17 countries battling it out, and they'll have just six weeks to make it happen. We want to welcome to Real Biz Bob Thielman. He taught technology for 33 years at Northport High School and now he's co-coach and mentor to the Half Hollow Hills first team, the Thunder Colts. Also joining us is high school senior Thomas LaRosa. It's his fourth year on the Thunder Colts first robotics team and he is the current CEO. And Christopher Calashoni, he's serving as the director of engineering for the Thunder Colts. It's his third year on the team and he's a junior in high school. It's so great to have all of you with us. Thanks Thank for you for us. inviting us. So where do you even begin on a, a challenge like this? Where do we begin? <laughs> Staring at each other saying, what do we do? That's basically the reaction when we're at the kickoff and we see it for the first time. It seems like an incredible task, insurmountable. But we uh, go back to our school and uh, dissect it. Dissect it. Thomas, you are the CEO. Does that mean that you ultimately have to say, okay, guys, this is the direction we're heading in? All right. <laughs> and was that difficult? Is that a difficult thing? Yeah, it's very important for us to strategize in the beginning and, like Mr. Thielman said, to dissect the game and figure out what direction we want to go in because there's just so many different options we can take. What were some of the wildest ideas, Chris, that you put out on the table? We've had a, uh, a wide selection of crazy ideas. A few involved a flying robot, a few years ago to dump frisbees, but usually we spend a few days trying to narrow down and cut out some of the more crazy ideas, and we ultimately come up with something, and the past few years it's worked for us, so. It's worked. Yeah. So tell me about some of the last couple of years, what, what things that have worked. Two years ago, the game was throwing frisbees and climbing a pyramid, and we decided to focus only on the pyramid, and after a long six weeks and cutting it close at the end, we managed to do it. 
and we, at our regionals we were one of the only teams that managed to do it. Last year we also had a very successful robot making the quarterfinals of two different competitions. What was the robot? It was designed to kick a two foot exercise ball into a goal that's about eight feet in the air so we had a 14 pound mallet that swung around and kicked it and pretty successful. <laughs> Thomas, you like that? You're shaking your head yes? Yes, it was, it was a good year. I mean, we had an interesting drive system. It was uh, called Mechanim, so we could sort of drive. We could spin around in our place and go sideways and forward and backward. Bob, you've been teaching now for 33 years. Thank you, first of all, <laughs> for that gift to so many students. But beyond that, what do you think it is? Dean and I, Dean Kamen and I were just having this conversation about how it's difficult to, for whatever reason, to get people, young people, excited about this. What do you think the key is? You know, in the current model of education, um, students learn to the test. And when the test is over, that Moving on. knowledge fades. But when you give them a challenge that they can sink their teeth into, that they can be excited about, that knowledge that they use and they apply to the solution of that problem stays with them forever. They realize that all those things I learned in math and science, this is what I do with them. You guys like that? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's important, obviously, is that you're enjoying yourselves. What do you want to do with this knowledge? Eventually go to college, because I'm only a junior right now, study <laughs> engineering, and then hopefully I can do something like this for a job when I grow up, get paid for it, because it's just so much fun. I took on wiring a robot, and the whole electrical aspect is really interesting to me, and now I'm looking to go to college and study renewable energy. What are the biggest challenges within the competition itself? Yeah. The time frame is definitely the biggest one. Not a lot of time. What, personally, what is the biggest takeaway that you've had so far, Chris, from, from doing this competition? Well, last year, when Mr. Thielman came, he started teaching us how to do CAD program, which is computer-aided design. And I'm like, I can't do this. It's going to be too hard. But I went to the class. I started to learn, and I really loved it. And then we got a 3D printer, and I was able to print out the things I made on the computer. And it was just amazing to see how technology has become so advanced. Thomas? wiring the robots in general. The robots are so compact and you have to fit so many electrical components in such a small place and problem solving and figuring it out. Question, any girls on your team? It's a hard task, but yes, we have quite a few. We've gotten much better. Robotics has been conceived as a male gender club team, but we've worked really hard and it's quite obvious now to our school, I think, that it's both. Are gender. girls welcome? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad to, you guys both smiled when I asked that question. So it, it seems pretty clear that they, any girl who wants to be on the team is more than welcome to be on the team. Yeah, absolutely. Bob, what, what is the number one takeaway you've had from teaching for all of these you years, know, inspiring students? I think it's the twinkle in their eye. Uh, when I say something or show something, you can see the light go on. You can't buy that. It's just such a wonderful feeling when you know that you've inspired them and they get it and now they can move forward with it. Great message to end on. Mr. Thielman, as your students call you, That's Bob it. Thielman, thank you so much. Thomas and Christopher, thank you for joining us on Real Biz. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we want you all to stay right there because we're going to give you a chance, both of you, to ask Dean Kamen one question that you're dreaming to ask. But before we get to that, it is an increasingly competitive job market out there for college students. And one big way to differentiate yourself is a solid internship, real world experience. A recent Gallup poll shows that graduates with internships felt more prepared for life after college than those who didn't take their studies outside of the classroom. So how do you land that dream internship? Well, here with the answer is Tony Parasini. He is the Senior Vice President of Human Resources and Administration for the Boeing Company. And some of the world's leading technology companies, from NASA to Boeing to Google, are big sponsors of the first competition, and they are actively looking to recruit the next big innovator. So what is the number one thing you need to know to land your dream internship? That is exactly the question we put to you. Welcome to Real Biz. Thanks, Rebecca. It's nice to be here today. We have roughly every year about 1,700 interns that we hire into the Boeing company. And what we look for is um, you know, technical skills, grades, all those kind of things. And we find people that, you know, if they have a passion for building something better for themselves, for our company, or for the world, those are the kind of people we want to have in the Boeing company. Tony, I find frequently people will come to me. Um, I had somebody actually contact me on Twitter recently about this, and they said, I'm on LinkedIn. I 
definitely have some contacts out there. I have some good real world experience. But how do I begin that process? Can I send you an email, Tony? Well, you can, but really the best way to apply for an internship or a job at Boeing is to go to the Boeing.com homepage. Boeing is a place that people really want to come to work for, and we get over a million resumes every year. And so you have to be able to segregate yourself and promote yourself in the process to really get noticed. So just sending an email doesn't do it. Getting your resume into the system around a particular job is the right way to go about it. What is the number one degree program you would recommend somebody who desires a job with Boeing pursue today? We have 50,000 engineers at Boeing. Think about that, 50,000 engineers in a country that only produces 70,000 engineers a year. And so the demand for resources is really, really critical for us to be successful. When you think about what we do at Boeing, we you know, invent, design, build, maintain, improve, some great products from helicopters to fighter jets to commercial airplanes to satellites to other spacecraft. And the skills that are required are across the board. So engineering skills across all disciplines, finance skills, business skills are all critical to be successful at the Boeing Company. And what kind, what kind of money do these jobs pay? I just want to put it out there because I think when, when people look at that engineering degree, some people are daunted by it, but the return on that investment may help them. Well, no doubt about it. I think engineering jobs are high paying jobs uh, across the country. These are the best paying jobs and especially, and they're the jobs that exist. You said you have 50,000 engineering jobs. We told people at the beginning of Real Biz, there were 70,000 engineers in this country currently. So the math really works out in favor of anybody who's going to school for engineering right now. Absolutely. And personally, I'm an engineer myself. That ability to design something and build something gives you an intense uh, satisfaction. We love the first program because it gets people to see the whole cycle of uh, designing, building, maintaining, improving a product in a very short window of time. And it gets opportunity for folks to work together in teams, which is what you do in a company like Boeing. The competition to get the right job in the right company is intense. And so as you think about your own career activity and your potential, think about what the opportunities for you to, to complete yourself not only in terms of grades, but also in terms of working in teams like you get from a program like FIRST Robotics, or as well what you do in the community or social activities at your school are really, really important because we like the whole person in the process, including the technical skills. Tony Parasita of Boeing, thank you so much for laying it all out for us. Thank you very much. And we're back here on set with Tom and Chris who have Probably, in my opinion, one of the most unique opportunities considering your love of robotics. You have Dean Kamen right here, and you have the opportunity to ask him anything. So are you ready? Do you have your questions ready? Tom, let's start with you then. If you could go back in your life and change one thing, what would it be? I wish when I was a kid there was a first competition because I would have participated. You know, in-classroom stuff always seemed a little boring and dull to me. The answer's in the back of the book. Everybody's done these problems before, but then after school you get to go to the football game or the basketball game. Nobody knows who's going to win, and people get passionate about it. And it, the reason I started first was I realized if we could make learning science and technology as hands-on as being on any other kind of sports team where you get to really do it instead of studying it as an abstract thing, we'd get more people excited about it. Again, in our culture, very few young women and minorities think about the fact that science and engineering and problem solving and teamwork is every bit as fun and exciting as bouncing a ball, and it's way more likely to lead to jobs. But there was no first when I was a kid. That's what I would have wanted to do. Chris? Of the many things you've invented, which is your favorite and why? I've been asked that question many times, and the answer is always the same. The most exciting invention we have hasn't happened yet, because <laughs> every year technology gets better, every year we get smarter, every year we have more resources, we work on bigger and bigger problems. We made insulin pumps and we made machines to deal with people that have end-stage renal failure. Those are groups of people in the millions. There are billions of people out there that don't have access to clean water. Why don't we come up with a way to solve that problem through technology? There are billions of people on this planet that have never used electricity. They've never had the internet. Now with LEDs being very efficient and the internet being you know, globally available, if you have a little electricity, 
We've got to supply electricity to the world, and that's a technical challenge. The number of issues that this world faces that can be solved by a generation of people that have the courage and have the resources and the technology and the skills to, to make the world a better place is unbelievable. So the best technology isn't here yet. It's up to you guys to make it great wisdom. I do have a question for you boys and, and some people are going to say why is she asking two uh, high school students who are boys this question but I do wonder what do you think the reason is that girls are not more involved in robotics engineering? It, I think mainly because the stereotypical girl goes into like fashion and jewelry and design and all that stuff. I don't think Usually when a girl has to take a science, like in my classes, for example, they're like, oh, let me just take this, let me get it over with. There's, they don't have the interest there. They have interests in other areas, but they don't realize that science can also be fun for them. Yeah, I think there's a lot of intimidation with the tools and such. And for the girls that are, are in the club right now, they've realized that they have just as much potential as a guy does. Dean, because you mentioned this in your answer about clean water technology, electricity for places that are not getting electricity, is that, are those the areas you're focusing on for the future and in invention? People say I have really three careers. My day job is mostly building medical equipment for some of the biggest, best companies in the world to solve the problems of today. I use some of the resources that we get from doing that to work on what people call, you know, Dean's uh, fantasies supplying clean water to the developing world, supplying energy, and putting first uh, in a place where it's available to every kid. And uh, yes, DECA is now working on some big projects to supply water, to supply electricity, and to help put first. Right now, first is in 81 countries. We are uh, right now uh, testing our water machines in five different uh, developing environments around the world. And, and you have a big, big player on board. We have a couple of big players. On the water project, we had the Coca-Cola company agree to spend over a year in five different countries in Africa and South America. Now we're working with the Keurig company to come up with ways to bring this technology to high volume by putting it, for instance, in the United States as the basis of uh, water maybe uh, to feed their machines. And we hope that just like the cell phone was developed for use in the developed world, but now uh, has given communication to the developing world in a way that was unprecedented before. Technology can do things uh, that are just unimaginable in each generation. And I think if we take water and electricity and, and use the model of the cell phone, uh, we ought to be able to very quickly wipe out the number one cause of disease on this planet lack of clean water, and we ought to bring the most effective productivity tool to a few billion people, basic electricity. And I think we're going to do that relatively quickly. Well, I hope for everybody watching Real Biz today, you have seen the future and the people who are going to build it. Chris, Tom, Dean, thank you so much to all of you for joining us. Do you guys feel like with your questions answered, you're better off? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the competition again thank this you. year. Dean, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for joining us for Real Biz. We want to hear from you. If you could invent anything in the world, anything in the world, no limits, what would it be? Like us, tweet us at Rebecca Jarvis and comment below. From the studios in New York City, I'm Rebecca Jarvis. Have a great day. Go invent something.